opportunities going in there. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, I just was notified when I came off the field and uh, give our thoughts and prayers out to uh, Dwayne Haskins and his family at Ohio State University and uh, obviously the NFL organization he's a part of to be a, a, a player of that caliber, but to be the leader that he was. And he's obviously touched a lot of lives in a short amount of time. So uh, thoughts and prayers with him. Uh, um, but uh, transition to what we did here today, we went out and had scrimmage number two and, and um, uh, kind of modified it a little bit. Where ones, when they went, we, we did a full move the ball scrimmage, but they didn't tackle. Um, it allowed us to really be able to function as, as ones. We had about seven guys, eight guys total on offense and defense that if we did live tackle football today, they wouldn't have been able to uh, be out there competing. So um, those guys went thud, which uh, was, was very productive, very good work. Uh, our twos went live tackle football the whole time and, and really had some good learning. We got over 60, I believe 65 plays with those twos. And with the ones we had, I believe almost, uh, almost 60 plays uh, of good move the ball football. Everything from uh, first and 10 from the 25, you know, simulating a uh, first possession of a series uh, to uh, plus 50 to red area to backed up to goal line. So it was really, really good work. Um, uh, a couple guys uh, jumped out. Um, you know, I think of uh, a guy like uh, 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 Sean Miller is a true freshman, came here and just in three weeks, you can see the growth that he has. He's a very, very talented player that's uh, got tremendous upside. Some of our young running backs, Jordan Anderson, Aiden Lawfrey, both uh, made some good strides. Even uh, Nick Fadonzo, who was a guy that really haven't, hasn't been on the field for us yet, but he got opportunities out there today and was very productive. So uh, our quarterbacks continue to grow. Um, Chase, I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, Tommy DeVito uh, just continues to make strides. Uh, a very, very uh, gifted player, good passer. Um, does some good things with his arms. He just got to learn to play in our type, our type of offense, our style. Um, and, and Barry's working really good with him. Um, uh, Ryan Johnson probably played as good as, as I've seen him play out there today. Did some really good things, uh, getting the ball out uh, as well as making decisions. So, and Samari Collier did, did, did more today than I've uh, seen him do to this point. So, uh, excited about the growth of those guys. Uh, o Lyman, and D Lyman continue to go forward, and uh, we'll see where this next uh, next two weeks goes. Which this time of year, how you did, how is how much recruiting is going on? Recruiting, yeah. like, <laughs> is it all the time? Is yeah. it constant? Um, well, a day like today, we have uh, one official visitor in, um, uh, several unofficials. Um, uh, one of the things that, that is happening now in the transfer portal world, right, like uh, there's X number of uh, scholarships you can give out, which are called initials, uh, but you can recruit really uh, some guys if they pay for their, their, their visit here. If they do some things, um, you can uh, count them as blue shirts forward, and, and that's going on all over the country um, and, and what's going on today here. Um, and then we had probably... I bet you dang near close to 15 um, high school prospects on campus today, and I believe we had five offers uh, that were on campus. So it's it's never ending. Is, is the level of kids you're going after now different than even a year ago? Um, I understand the question. No, I don't think so. We, you know, we go after guys that we feel can help us win championships. And, okay. and, and um, now I think we're probably a little bit more prepared, right? Like last year, okay. uh, that was the facet. And then a year ago, we couldn't because we were still under COVID rules. We didn't really have you know spring recruiting uh, they weren't allowed to go out in April and May so it was just a, a different time we were zooming you know quite a bit right. uh, but but by far just even like the outreach in our state to have 10 coaches in the state hitting every school uh, we definitely have an awareness in the state better than ever before I get one more yeah if, if there's one trait that you guys you just demand is there one thing over everything else that's really important from a recruiting standpoint? yeah when you when you're looking at the kids whatever it, you know whatever position. Um, you know, we, we, we really talk a lot about, you know, um, what we call tough, tough, smart, dependable, TSD. Um, okay. So it's maybe teach your question, right, three traits. But, but, yeah, that's but right. there's never, that doesn't involve a 40 time, it doesn't involve a vertical jump, doesn't involve how well they throw or catch the ball. Sure. It's a way of living life, right? Um, and I think in today's world, you know, NIL is going to change the landscape of college football. Mm -hmm. it, there's, it's already happened. It's going to happen. It's going to continue to probably increase more than ever before. And I think in this world uh, that we're in, uh, you know, for people to put money behind players, like in, in uh, concepts, that the, the uh, premium for who they stand for and what they represent probably stand uh, as a high a quality thing as anything ever before, right? There's some early NIL stuff here where guys maybe make pledges, go to a place and, and leave before they even take a snap, right? Like, and, and that, that's, um, that's something I think cumulatively will have a huge effect early on in this NIL deal as much as anything. Coach, you, you graduated a really big group of super seniors and seniors. It seems like depth is going to have to come from some kids that we haven't seen on the field much. 
Are, are you starting to see that quality depth emerge here in um, spring? Well, I think I, I, I'm very impressed um, with some of the players that we've we've brought here in the last, you know, over the last year and a half. Um, uh, I look at out there today, you know, and I watch Isaiah Adams and Zach Chrysler just really be impressive. Um, and then, you know, like Josh McCray got his most extensive work out there today, and he's definitely made a jump. But uh, you look at, you know, two of our premier players, Chase Brown, Sidney Brown, two two really gifted players, and, and the way they play the game now. Like I, I literally said to our staff last week after the scrimmage, I don't know how much better we get with two Browns on the field going against each other. Like it just, they're so intense and they're so so physically uh, developed that uh, one of them's hitting the other one on any given play. If we hand the ball out to Chase, Sydney trying to tackle him with vengeance, and, and I just don't know if that's a good thing for us <laughs> on a consistent basis, right? So, um, uh, the, you know, I look at a guy, uh, Jordan Slaughter has just the, f- the physicality that he plays with, the balance, his athleticism, and how much he's changed since we've been here is, is pretty impressive. Um, uh, Tip Ryman uh, was in there, uh, was it? Thursday, I guess, before a team meeting, and I introduced him. We had a guest coach, a, a guy that coached with me in the NFL with the Patriots, and I uh, introduced him to to uh, Tip, and, and I said, Tip, what'd you weigh when we got here? And he said 228, and he weighs 262 now, and looks great, right? Um, he's married and put on weight. It happens to all of us, but but uh, um, I think it, it just is a great indicator of what we're building. Great. Year two with yeah. the staff, save for Barry, obviously. Yeah. What are the goals in the eval period, and, and how are they different maybe from – Last year, and like the, eval the, coming up, the recruiting eval period. Yeah, um, you know, like we were actually kind of ready, set, go. Uh, we were going to go on April fifteenth, which is the first day, but it's also Good Friday, and you know, about three quarters of schools are closed. So, uh, and then a lot of schools are closed on that Monday. So, I, I think a year ago we wouldn't even been thinking that far in advance. Uh, but um, I've already laid out a plan with uh, Pat. Uh, we allow our guys to kind of plan their week out. We'll be out um, basically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for five straight weeks. Um, you get 168 evaluation days. Um, 142 of those will be used by my nine assistant co- I'm sorry, eight assistant coaches. My coordinators will be a little bit less. Um, and then we have the X factor with Ben Miller, you know, just because uh, of the situation he's in. So we've already divided up those days, set a precedence. Um, and uh, I think we've just got a lot better, stru- you know, setup of what we're going to do. Uh, offers that are out there, offers that we've um, uh, confirmed that kids that are visiting already in June, like a year ago at this time, we didn't have any concept. We've already got, I believe, uh, 18 or 19 official visits set already, so we're just way more ahead. How is Ben? Ben's doing great, thank you. Um, I appreciate all the outreach that everybody gives him. He's, uh, you know, he comes out to practice by, by theory, by NCAA rules, we can, he's still recruiting for us, right? So he can't be out and on the field practicing and, and coaching uh, because I've replaced him in our counters, but uh, the NCAA allows him to recruit full time, so. Uh, it's been awesome. I think Tuesday uh, he was out there. He and I go back and forth on text quite a bit, and uh, we have a Bible study on 7:30 on Saturday mornings. And he was in there today. It was just awesome to see him. How's the offensive line looking, Brett? I know. It, and are you happy with the depth in the sense of guys that can play multiple positions and yeah. guys that maybe can come in if you have an injury? Concern? You know, that's probably been the number one. Obviously, we had a little flare up during the fall about offensive I'm line not depth. To go right? there, no, Brett. I understand. But uh, like just a pure, we just needed numbers and. Um, you know, uh, uh, to have Jordan Slaughter back has been huge, and then to bring in uh, Zai and, and uh, um, uh, Isaiah. But then, you know, uh, uh, Zach Barlev has really made a nice jump. Uh, Josh Gesky has been an incredible change from a year ago spring when he first came in here. Uh, today he pancaked a guy down on the four-yard line, got a, a holding call, but I think it was just because he, he just pushed him so bad, right? Like, it, And he got fired up, and you saw the way the kids reacted to him. So... Uh, those two guys in particular, Barlev and Geski, have been. Uh, Cruz is getting a lot of work in there. Uh, Cruz is awesome and just needs to continue to work on his snapping. Um, yeah, it's it's probably been the number one position that's changed. Kind of like wide receivers a year ago, just the transition they went through. Obviously, we, with the, with Doug Kramer, um, uh, Vidarian, and, and um, uh, um, uh, Paltrow coming back last year, it kind of helped us. Survive that moment, but now with those guys gone, but we did the re-recruitment of Palcho that helps out quite a bit. So uh, I'm really excited where they're at. Is there a is pill maybe the key to all? Pills and unbe- yeah, I, I should have Sorry, brought, no. you know pill. Uh, he's done at center. Is pretty he, amazing. he is. Uh, you know, I had no. I, I remember when I found out he was a walk-on tight end. I didn't know that. I thought he'd been a recruited offensive lineman, and he he came in. I gave him heat the other day. I saw before and after of his hairdo. Oh, right. So he's right. he's grown in many ways, um, but he. He's uh, really had a nice, nice spring for us. Um, 
I think Pill is one of those unique guys that literally can play from tackle to tackle. He can play tackle guard center, and he, he's done a tremendous job at center this spring. Coach, uh, uh, athletic defensive line's a pretty good place to start yeah. for your for defense. Is that a team strength? And, um, what, do you, what do you make of the nose tackle? Johnny's playing really well. Um, Keith, unfortunately, had an injury, so it's uh, limited what he can do. Um, um, full recovery be with us back in the fall, but he's just out for the spring. Um, uh, T. Ra, uh, Veritas, and, and um, uh, obviously Calvin um, inside. I think uh, you know give us some some great competition in there. Um, I tell you, a guy that's, that's jumped out is Bryce Barnes. Um, we we switched Kurtz to the defensive line, and he's looked uh, really good at defensive end through the first three practices he's been over there. So um, uh, it's still a, the D line position in general is very thin. Um, Said, said McConnell, um, probably the last two weeks has played as good as I've seen him play too. So the thing that's been awesome, right, is you just see these young players uh, develop and grow. Uh, Matt Bailey was out here today. Um, uh, we had a lot of our uh, incoming signees were out there today. Uh, and I got a chance to talk to Matt's mom before the practice. And she's like, she just like, it's fun, you know, to be here and see the growth of these guys. I said, one of the greatest parts of spring practice is see some of these young guys take big steps, right? And um, you know, that that's probably what we're seeing more than anything, and that, that that's that's the fun part to be around. Keith played a little bit of nose tackle last year. Keith? Is that an option for him again? I think in down a distance, Keith does, Johnny does. Um, the versatility that J-Mo preaches in that room, um, it gives them value, not only why they're here, but hopefully beyond. But I would say Johnny and Keith both have inside value, uh, for sure, in, in certain packages. A long time before your next class signs. Yeah. I mean, months, months. How, how much of a hurry are you in to get that filled? Is that kind of an overtime thing? or? Well, uh, two things, right? Like, I think you always want good players to say yes whenever they can. Okay. Um, uh, we got a couple in-state guys to say yes that right. have been huge for us and, 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 and need to uh, continue to emphasize that. But um, right now, until the NCA comes out and tells us exactly what the rules are, um, uh, we're, we're constantly evolving. There's three proposals right now. I don't know where they're going to land, but... It could be 25 initials like we've always had. It could be 25 plus seven like we had. And then there's a strong push to go to 85, which just means just unlimited. There's no more account on initials, which is really the common sense way to do it. Mm -hmm. I think every coach in America would be for that. Um, uh, it's it, it's almost impossible for me to get to 85 scholarship players uh, right. again, you know, just because of that number uh, that you could go out and recruit. Um, and especially because the transfer portal right now is just so, uh, um, you know, fluid, um, not okay. only for us, but for... Uh, our opponents, right, and everybody else. So um, I, I hope the recruiting rules catch up to what the rule, what the rules that we're playing under currently uh, happen sooner than later. Do you kind of have to slow rolling because you're not sure what's going to end up? Um, I, I'm not slow rolling, but I'm also not in a hurry, right? Okay, like, gotcha. um, I, I think, you know, uh, you know, on our board right now, there's a, there was a, a tight end that we were recruiting that committed to an SEC school, and because there was transition there, he decommitted, and then now he's recommitted to another uh, school and that, I mean, and he's not even entered his senior year in high school, right? So I mean, there's like, there's like those things happening all the time that uh, I think just as a head coach, if we see one we like and and, and we want to make full go rodeo and go, I'm I'm all for it, but yeah. I'm not in any hurry. You talked before about preferred walk on program chasing yeah. kids in high school. Tell me about a walk on like Ryan Johnson. That's yeah, just kind of like send him film out, trying to transfer up from D two. Yeah, walk on. You know, it's kind of a unique kind of thing. You know, what is it like to find a kid like that? I think everybody's story is their story, right? Like, I always tell kids whether a, a five-star, four-star, three-star, two-star, no-star, everybody's story is your story. Just try to maximize it. And, and uh, RJ's a great example, right? Like, uh, I knew last year after spring uh, with the transition we had, and then when Isaiah moved to quarterback, there was just a lot of uh, movement in our QB room. And... Um, RJ reached out to us. He, it, because of the COVID rules, very unique, right? He was able to come in and and actually perform for us, and and that that would not be able to exist now, right? That rule doesn't exist. So it was just a a very unique recruiting story for RJ. Um, he's an awesome kid, like always up here, always uh, coaching. He's a very positive uh, outlook. Um, you know, it's been impressive to see him continue to grow. And today, especially a nice day out for him there. And with Matt Robinson leaving and everything else, yeah. I mean, it's almost vital to have another arm or, you know, just have somebody who knows the offense going through this. Yeah, we brought Hubes, our, our uh, yeah. uh, manager. Uh, we brought him into the QB room. Um, I had a couple cues out there today at practice, and I was just literally, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy. You know, Samari, uh, really, Samari, RJ, and, and uh, Tommy have been getting the majority of the workload. But, yeah, going into fall, obviously we'll have, uh, you know, our, our signee come in and, and – 
uh, you know, I think the big thing is it's a, it's a land of opportunity for anybody. Coach, would you, would you rather recruit a high school kid at quarterback and develop him or grab a guy out of, out of the portal that you know can help you right away? I think universally your, your, our statement here at Illinois would always be we'd rather recruit high school kids and develop and build. Um, but the reality of the matter is, right, sometimes things uh, don't, don't work out the way you want them to. It could be injuries. It could be, um, you know, somebody doesn't play at the level you want or maybe they play higher than the level. Uh, that you expected them. Um, it's really, you can't shut your door to anything. Um, I think, you know, during my coaching career, I was fortunate enough to have Russell Wilson transfer in as one of my first grad transfers. And uh, because of the situation we had, we had three quarterbacks with, with season ending injuries at that position. And if Russell hadn't showed up, we probably, well, we were we were Big Ten champs that year. And it might have been a, a situation where we would be struggling to get to a bowl game uh, just because of one position that got severely affected by bad luck. Brett, how have you seen Julian step into that, like more of a leadership? Julian Pearl? Yeah, on that one. Basketball aside, I guess. Yeah, like well, you know, that. it's interesting. So um, he had surgery on that hand, and then they cast him with an open hand. And I'm, I'm like, I watched, and I'm like, this isn't going to He can't punch or do anything. So I walked up to him, said, let's close that, make it a nub. And that was all he needed to hear. And now he was able, he was one of the reasons that we went uh, once today, thud, because when we were practicing and not playing tackle football, he could go today. And so it's really been his first week of full work. And today was the first pseudo live that he had been involved with. And, and um, uh, Julian can be as good as Julian wants to be. He's extremely talented. I told him the other day, like, you can't find you, right? Like when you walk into Subway, they look at you like, holy cow, because you're freaky, right? He's tall, he's long, he's athletic. Um, uh, but he he's definitely grown, um, but we need him to make more steps. Are you seeing that year too? growth out of Josh McRae. He has said a lot about his freshman year and how yeah. it changed him and well, good and bad. Yeah, so he, uh, he'd he been doing it with a little bit of a soft tissue issue. Um, so he were in practice nine and today was the first time he'd been cleared okay. to go full go. Um, so, uh, you know, absolutely he's grown. Um, you know, these kids now, man, they got so much coming at them. Like sure. everybody always says kids are different. They're not different. It's just the avenues to reach them are, are different, right? So he's going to have the people that love him reaching out to him. They're going to have people that he doesn't have no reach out to him. Um, uh, he's in a long distance love relationship, right? So like he's got, oh, oh, I couldn't figure that out until I was 42, right? So he's like got a lot of things for an 18 year old kid that most people uh, don't even, or can't even imagine. So he's he's making steps in the right direction. Um, a lot of positive work and the kids like working with him too. Outside of Kurtz, are there any other position changes throughout? Mm. The uh, throughout yeah, the well, Taylon, we moved to, from safety, uh, corner to safety. Okay. Uh, that's been really good. Um, uh, pure positional changes. No, that's that's that's, that's it, right? But that might be a little inside out backer to outside backer and D end to D tackle. But um, Kurtz would probably be the biggest one. And then uh, Taylon, uh, I did that after last last week's scrimmage. Coach, can you comment on the, how important Tank Ride is to your program? One, one thing that strikes us interviewing these kids is how much they've changed their bodies yeah. since last year, especially Jordan Slaughter, who you mentioned. Um, can you comment on Tank? Yeah. Well, first, you know, Papa Tank now, he just had his first baby. Um, uh, I got a text message. Uh, uh, Tank Jr. is here. Uh, when I woke up the other morning, it was kind of awesome. And, and to your point, I uh, hadn't really, we met at 6.30 that morning as a, as a team. And uh, I had my opening slide, always says tough, smart, dependable. And the second slide said uh, Tank Jr. is here. And, and the whole place, every player uh, went crazy. And, you know, Tank wasn't even in the room. And I, I shared that with him. It just... It shows the effect that he has on our program. Um, uh, I don't know if there's one single person that has an effect in this building as much as him, like the dynamic uh, learning that he brings. I don't think there's any question when our kids, um, not only from Tank, but anybody in that strength room, like when they speak to our kids, they don't look around and ask questions. They just do what they ask them to do. Um, uh, and, the, and the truth and honesty of that is pretty, pretty unique in this world that we live in. Um, Tank's value for us, uh, for me, tenfold, he's constant communication with me, uh, his, his effect in recruiting, um, his effect on development is, yeah, it's it's priceless. He's he's truly a rare breed. Maybe not a position change, yeah. but can you line up Alec Bryant a lot of the ways you did with OC last year? Yeah, well, Alec's been impressive. Um, I think Alec, Zeke, and Seth, those three guys have really kind of separated themselves. Um, uh, Shaman Cooper's had a nice spring, too. There's sure. one that, uh, you know, we kind of kept going inside, outside. Shaman has had a nice couple weeks here at outside backer, so I think those four guys, Jared Beatty, we were excited to get in here and see what he could do, but unfortunately he's been sidelined with a uh, with a knee injury. But um, I think I think the combination of, of Shimon, uh, Zeke, Seth, and Alec Bryant could be somewhat similar 
you know, to what we had with, with uh, Isaiah and, and uh, OC for sure. Yeah.